All right, uh, for more on uh, this big story, I'm joined by Mateen Heather, a senior journalist uh, who's joining us from Pakistan. Uh, Mr. Heather, thank you so much for speaking to World is One News. What's the latest? Uh, yes, latest is uh, that uh, the passports of uh, former Prime Minister Mr. Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Mariam Nawaz has been confiscated uh, by Federal Investigation Agency. And uh, these documents are likely to be handed over to National Accountability Bureau officers. So uh, the vehicles uh, outside the aircraft were quite ready to take uh, Mr. Nawashi and his daughter, but Mr. Nawashi uh, refused to sit in the <coughs> official vehicle of National Accountability Bureau and started walk towards terminal. So they are surrounded by security officials. Uh, this means any moment they would be taken into custody. Virtually they are under siege. They have been taken into the custody. But since uh, being the former prime minister, uh, he's uh, on foot. He's walking towards the terminal and refused to sit in the official vehicle of National Accountability Bureau. He's surrounded by heavy security. The security officials are requesting him uh, to sit in the vehicle. So. This means if he reaches to the terminal, so he may not be allowed to move outside terminal, then there might be a final action, and final action could be that he would be forcefully uh, put into the vehicle. Uh, he and uh, as right. well as his daughter is concerned, uh, being, being a lady, it is also a sensitive matter, so it's most likely that the services of the female security staff may be hired to uh, physically uh, capture Mariam Nawaz. Both are gradually moving towards the terminal and refuse to sit on the vehicles of National Accountability Bureau, but they are under virtual arrest. Right. Uh, Mr. Heather, is there any clarity where uh, the Sharifs are uh, being taken? Is it uh, uh, the um, Adiala jail in Rawalpindi or uh, some other prison? Uh, is there clarity on that? That's uh, quite clear because uh, the entire judicial process took place in Islamabad. Okay. So all the arrangements uh, have been made uh, for uh, his accommodation in Adiala prison, which is outside Ravalpindi, or, or in the outskirts of Ravalpindi. The moment he is uh, officially taken into the vehicle at Lahore airport, then both will be placed in a special helicopter. And ironically, it was the same helicopter which he used to use as Prime Minister. That is mean Cabinet Division helicopter. That is ready now at Lahore Airport. So the moment uh, they will be uh, overcome, they are captured, they will be put into the helicopter. Helicopter will bring them all the way from Lahore to Rawalpindi. The scene has been made that both will be kept in a Diyala prison in Rawalpindi where son-in-law, Mr. Nawashi, Marine Sarkar, uh, has already reached. He has already reached uh, in a Diyala prison. Uh, a couple of days back, he was taken into custody by the National Accountability uh, Bureau team when he uh, appeared from uh, from his hometown in Rawalpindi and surrendered himself before the authorities in Rawalpindi. So, uh, it's 100 percent sure. Okay. Uh, Prime Minister and the caretaker Prime Minister and the entire uh, cabinet is monitoring the situation. Military authorities are also on high alert. Rangers have virtually taken over the control of Lahore Airport. Paramilitary forces, security forces, police com commandos, and thousands of police personnel are uh, outside uh, Lahore Airport. Not only the entire Lahore is virtually under siege. So all the main avenues, arteries, roads, highways uh, coming from uh, connecting with the other cities of uh, the Punjab with Lahore have been temporarily suspended. All entries towards Lahore airport have been completely blocked. So there are no chances of any worker to reach to Lahore airport. The visuals that you are watching on television, screen, these are those workers who are uh, who are a couple of miles away from the whole airport because right, right uh, yesterday the arrangements have been made uh, to secure the Lahore air airport. Security is so tough that not a single person could uh, reach to the whole airport. So this is the scene right now.
Right. Uh, Mr. Heather, uh, as you said that the city has been uh, under siege, uh, the security is in place, tight security is in place. Could you please confirm if the internet services remain suspended uh, uh, still? Uh, I beg your pardon? I'm saying uh, are uh, internet services still suspended or have they been resumed in Lahore? Uh, yes, uh, yes, in, in Lahore, and that was uh, uh, that was meant to suspend uh, and disrupt the communication among uh, Muslim League workers and leaders, so that they may not communicate each other and they may not make planning to reach to Lahore airport. So cellular services and internet services have been arrested, so that uh, have been suspended, uh, so that people may not communicate to each other. Uh, so once internet is suspended, that means Twitter and Facebook and WhatsApp and these all services are under suspension, including the mobile cell phone, uh, so that a uh, large number of women and workers uh, right. may not make uh, uh, communication uh, with each other in order to reach to Lahore Airport. Right. Uh, Mr. Heather, um, before uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif left from London, uh, we heard his mother uh, say that uh, if he goes to jail, she will accompany him. Any word on uh, uh, Ms. Shamim Akhtar? Uh, because a lot of eyes were on her. Uh, reports were emerging from Pakistan that uh, she was placed under house arrest. I'm not sure if that's true because a, a section of Pakistan media was reporting that. So could you please give us a confirmation on uh, uh, where uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif's mother is? Is, uh, at the moment? Yes, uh, when it is, uh, uh, the media did carry the statement of Mother of Mr. Navashi that uh, at any cost he would uh, like to meet uh, his son. So uh, there, there, there are no fresh reports that where is the mother of Mr. Navashi? She might be at, uh, at the Bobby Town residence. So, but she has made it clear that she would uh, definitely uh, be his son. When she will be, whether she will be permitted, or 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 on humanitarian ground, uh, they will definitely permit uh, his mother to uh, meet uh, definitely his son, Mr. Navashi, and that is likely that this meeting will take place somewhere in the Hussein D. Mesh Chapla Bay. So, let us report that that both Mani Mehran and Mr. Navashi have been uh, put on an helicopter in Lahore. It is, uh, it is not clear whether it is an helicopter or it is a special aircraft, but it is, it is the latest information is that both have been placed on a special aircraft in Lahore that may take them from Lahore to Rahul Sindhi. Uh, so uh, this is quite clear now that Mr. Marian Nawaz and Mr. Nawaz Sheikh has been uh, forcibly onboarded on a special aircraft parked at Lahore Airport and that aircraft may uh, take off shortly towards Rahul Sindhi. Right. Uh, Mr. Heather, uh, reports are also emerging out of Pakistan is uh, that Nawaz Sharif's brother, Shehwaz Sharif, is also leading a rally of PMLN workers towards the airport, which you're telling us the area has been cordoned off. Uh, could you please give us more details about that? Because uh, the security arrangements remain in place. It's tight security. The rangers are there. The police is there. Uh, the, the, a team of National Accountability Bureau is there. So uh, a, a lot of chaos is expected if that unfolds in the coming time. Yes, that's true. Uh, it's uh, not only his brother Sabarkari, a number of other top PMNL, PMS, Pakistan, Muslim League, Nawaz leaders are part of that particular lady. But as I told you, security is so extraordinary uh, tight uh, around uh, Lahore Airport that uh, uh, it could be Mr. Shabarkari or anyone else. But security has not permitted them to reach to Lahore Airport uh, at any cost. So, uh, so, uh, uh, yes, Sabah Sheep is there outside, uh, definitely the whole, uh, airport. They have been cut a couple of miles away, but they really have been stopped uh, to make entry towards uh, the whole airport. So, uh, it may not be possible for the Sabah to come to uh, airport and meet his brother. And as we have told you, he has already been placed on another special aircraft. So, so it may not be possible for Shabar to make any kind of contact or communication with him since he's a couple of miles away from the whole airport. Under no circumstances, no person 
और लोग लीडर ऑफ पाकिस्तान जिसमें भी भी गिराव की देश एम पी एस शाह लाहौर एयरपोर्ट इंक्लूडिंग असेंबली ऑफ मिनिस्टर नवाज शरीफ मिस्टर हैदर a lot of politicians a lot of uh, people in the media have come out and condemned the kind of restrictions that are in place a lot of people are calling it a form of martial law that's been imposed in the city of lahor while the other section says that it was important uh, because uh, there was so much tension there was so much uh, suspense around nawaz sharif's arrival and people didn't know what would happen so these restrictions were important how do you see these uh, you know preparations that are in place in the city of lahor was uh, uh, do you think gagging the media spending the internet or placing containers on the streets of lahore and islamabad was necessary or then i would like to report then september 2007 when the general chief was returning from united kingdom to islamabad and general police himself was in power so in a uh, sort of uh, things were the case that is now about the import they are the present uh, as part of uh, the don media team to make the coverage of the arrival of mr nawaz ki from uk to pakistan team arranged in the entire india and islamabad was team and although it was a different government it was uh, medically uh, dictated and it was mr and uh, mr nawaz ki was arrived to then but soon after the arrival uh, after two hours he was uh, placed on another jet and was taken to ultimate so the way here so these current arrangements the security arrangements in the whole which you are uh, saying that sort of a master the no these basically millions have been taken to prevent any untoward incident air force are usually sensitive installation and uh, at no cost uh, government can uh, permit these leaders and workers to reach to the whole airport you can imagine if security is lowered or if it is relaxed then the workers are quite charged leaders are quite charged they can uh, definitely uh, damage the uh, installations at the airport they can uh, definitely they do and try and they can uh, uh, they can create a lot of problems which uh, at that point of time to be beyond control of the authority so it was uh, not a martial law it is basically sub security arrangement meant uh, definitely uh, meant to uh, prevent any law or other situation and later in that the special day from that was uh, uh, at the whole airport has now taken off from the whole airport towards ravel delhi now Heather, if you could confirm that earlier in the day, about 378 PMLN workers were arrested by the forces, and now we hear that a lot of them have been detained outside the Lahore airport. Uh, what's the latest as far as uh, their activists are concerned? When they start hundreds of uh, uh, men, they had thousands of PMLN workers. They crossed the border. from Rabul Hindi to the most thousands of women and workers have been temporarily taken into custody. So they have been arrested. Some of the leaders have been placed in house arrest, and some of the leaders have been uh, taken into custody. But large number of uh, workers of uh, this party have been uh, arrested, and they are in various police stations from Rabul Hindi to the most since last forty-eight hours, and the action was taken to be. Uh, to uh, prevent these workers from reaching to the hall, so that they may not be in a position to uh, greet their leader. And once they are in detention, uh, government authorities uh, will be definitely relaxing. If everybody reaches the hall, then uh, it could be beyond the control of the uh, caretaker administration of the hall. So basically, all uh, the PMN workers from different cities and stations of Punjab. We were prevented from traveling to the hall. So arrests have been made within the hall. Arrests have been made, uh, made in all the adjoining cities of the hall, including uh, the Bhutan and Shahda. So um, now the latest is that uh, the special air staff uh, with Malim Nawaz and uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif on board is on way towards Shahda. Bhutan. They will be another scene in Shahda because there is already a police crackdown in Shahda on the arrest workers. 
activity around the city uh, airport has already been uh, made uh, extraordinary tight. Although the new Starbucks airport is 27 kilometers away, but old airport is still operated and they are likely to be brought to old airport between one and two. So, so airport and um, new airport uh, to the Diana prison, it's only 30 minutes drive. Right, uh, Mateen Haider, thank you so much for being so patient. But one last question that I have for you is uh, that, uh, you know, uh, there were a lot of reports that suggested that uh, the Sharif still have a legal recourse. They still have options to explore in the court. Um, uh, uh, earlier it was said that if they don't surrender, then they lose out on that option to appeal against their uh, conviction. So uh, what happens in that regard? So I'm sorry because of uh, some distortion. Your voice was not clear. I beg your pardon if you make uh, your question right. again. So uh, I was saying that uh, what are the options before Sharif's, uh, you know, the law says that the, uh, that the Sharif's can appeal against their conviction uh, according to the Section 32 of the National Accountability Bureau Ordinance uh, if they surrendered and they, they did. So they have the option of appealing against their conviction. However, uh, generally it's believed that the convicts who do not surrender after their conviction generally cannot file an appeal. So while the PMLN is trying to build that narrative that uh, it's a sort of a sacrifice that Nawaz Sharif has made, the the other side says that they've done it very smartly because they know the law. They are, uh, you know, they're using the loopholes in the law that if they surrender, they will be able to file an appeal against their conviction. Okay, then, uh, answer to your question, I'll give a very broad answer covering all the aspects but in a very precise way. One, uh, that uh, Mr. Nawazi's uh, legal team has already challenged his conviction and that uh, the new petition has been filed with the uh, accountability uh, court mm. and the court has followed it for uh, two weeks from the Supreme Court. So, uh, so within six weeks, uh, the review petition will also be decided, number one. And number two, Mr. Nawazi is quite hopeful uh, that his party will win the election. This is what uh, he is quite hopeful that in Central Punjab, his party will win the election. In this scenario, if his party is reached in Central Punjab and is able to form the government, uh, then the entire scenario will be a different one. There might be, there might be uh, important uh, legislation from Parliament that may overdo uh, conviction and everything that may contain the judicial power, something like that. But uh, his legal team is quite active. And if uh, if the accountability uh, uh, court uh, upholds the uh, conviction, then there are more uh, chances that his legal team may challenge his actual conviction uh, uh, before the high court. And uh, before high court, there are two options: they may go to high court and they may go to the Supreme Court of Pakistan because the Supreme Court just three days back gave uh, significant relief to former President Mr. Afzal Zardari again in money laundering cases. So uh, they will definitely also seek relief from the Supreme Court. Uh, the review petition has already been filed, and his party hopes uh, that it will. Uh, uh, right. uh, very visible, uh, in the upcoming election. Yes, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Heather, for giving us uh, such a comprehensive perspective and information on the big story uh, breaking on beyond and out of Pakistan. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam Nawaz have been arrested upon arrival at the Lahore International Airport and now they are being taken to the Adyala Jail. Uh, their passports have been seized by a team of uh, the FIA and Park Rangers. And uh, so their journey from London to Rawalpindi Jail is on its way, is uh, underway rather. And uh, remember, Nawaz Sharif was sentenced to 10 years in jail and his daughter 8 years uh, uh, in uh, the Panama Papers case. So that's the latest. And uh, one of the interesting things uh, that uh, Mateen Heather was telling us uh, that Nawaz Sharif and Maryam Nawaz both are uh, being taken in a chopper that Nawaz Sharif uh, used while he was Prime Minister. These visuals uh, that you see on your screens are from outside the Lahore airport uh, where a lot of PMLN workers have gathered in an anticipation to welcome Nawaz Sharif. However, a lot of them have been detained uh, by the security forces. Earlier in the day, about 378 
PMLN workers were arrested. Uh, remember, the city of Lahore has been turned into a fortress. There are, the internet services have been suspended. There is a gag order on the media. They cannot report, um, they cannot give a marathon coverage as far as uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif's uh, arrival was concerned. Uh, they were asked not to run any defamatory content uh, as far as uh, Nawaz Sharif and uh, the entire case was concerned. A lot of media, like a lot of uh, journalists and politicians are calling this entire episode um, like a martial law that's unfolding in the city of Lahore. They said that this it, it's, it's happening in excess uh, uh, that the city has been turned into a fortress. Um, those who live in Pakistan are saying that uh, the streets of Islamabad, Rawalpindi and Lahore are witnessing massive containers on their roads to stop the flow of traffic, to stop the people from reaching airport. For more on this, uh, I'm joined by uh, Talat Masood, who's a political uh, commentator. Mr. Masood, thank you so much for speaking to World is One News. Uh, it's a big story and everybody was expecting it uh, to happen. Nawaz Sharif and his daughter have been arrested. Uh, what's your response to this? Well, I think as party workers were uh, trying to get to the airport as many as possible, and I think they were trying to prove a point that they have a huge following, which is very true and especially in a city like Lahore, although there were people also who had come from outside. And um, there is no doubt that, um, you know, the PMLN uh, is a very important party, and uh, Nawaz Sharif has a following despite the fact that um, he has been convicted and is uh, facing um, jail. Uh, but despite that, I think uh, one cannot ignore the reality that his party is very powerful and one of the largest parties in the country and he is still considered um, an important political figure and I think he wanted to sort of retain his uh, political influence by coming back to Pakistan and I think this decision of his at least as of now looks to be correct from his perspective but obviously the, you know, the rule of law and the conditions that prevail in Pakistan that the elections are about to be held in the next uh, two weeks, uh, that shows to what extent it, it will influence the elections. Uh, we have to wait and see. But uh, this is what they were hoping. Uh, they are hoping that um, you know his presence in Pakistan, even if it be in jail, uh, would uh, definitely help the party uh, to retain its importance uh, as one of the main political parties of Pakistan. Right, uh, General Masood. Uh... Nawaz Sharif uh, has been asserting time and again, he's saying that uh, the establishment, which he essentially means that the army is plotting against him, it's a conspiracy to oust him and his party uh, before uh, the 25th July elections. Uh, what is your take on that? Because the other side says that it's, uh, it's an excuse that Nawaz Sharif is giving to hide his corruption. But the PMLN claims that, uh, uh, and Nawaz Sharif has also said that the army is trying to rig these elections. Uh, what is your take on uh, Nawaz Sharif? Well, I think both the narratives are right in the sense that <clears throat> I don't think uh, he's above board. So that, as far as I can see, um, and you know, the courts are the best to judge that. But my own view is that he's not above board. That is different. And that um, it's very selective uh, as far as persecution is concerned, because there are many other politicians who are as much involved. But um, and they have been completely ignored. So that's another aspect to it. The other thing is that uh, he's right when he says that uh, the military exercises a lot of power, political power, and uh, dominates politics and has more or less, um, uh, you know, subdued uh, normal politics. To that extent, I think there is a lot of in that as well. So I, I think uh, both the sides uh, are, are making a point. Uh, unfortunately, part. Um, um, is the one that suffers as a consequence of both these weaknesses. And what is needed is um, that you have to strengthen the democratic process. And to strengthen the democratic process, you need also honest uh, political leaders. And at the same time, you also need uh, no interference in politics by um, the establishment. So uh, I, I think both the narratives are right. And, uh, uh, and when they get corrected, I think Pakistan will be much faster.
Right, uh, sir. Uh, you know, this question comes to my mind a lot of times. That uh, you know, just before the elections, we've seen a lot of things unfold in Pakistan. We've seen uh, Nawaz Sharif getting arrested, uh, Mariam Nawaz getting arrested, his son-in-law was uh, arrested a few days ago. Then we see one blast after the other. Just today, we saw um, you know massive blast ripping through Balochistan. It's become a bloody election. Uh, you know, from an average Pakistani's point of view, if you think a voter that that who wants to go out and vote on uh, July. July the 25th. What do you think that was, voter must keep in mind? Because uh, uh, what he sees in front of him is, uh, uh, you know, the, the politics of the country is crumbling. Uh, the, the, there are security issues. So, uh, do you think for uh, for a person, for a for a for a common Pakistani, it's not a positive sign right right ahead of the elections? Well, I think it's very unfortunate. You know, these three or four incidents where in which so many casualties took place and innocent people's lives were lost uh, and the fact that they were not able to, I mean, doing the normal uh, politics and trying to sort of speak to people, take rallies and so on, and they were being targeted. And uh, this um, PTP is responsible for that because they don't want elections, they don't want, uh, uh, you know, Pakistan to be a democratic country. And as you know, there, there's a lot of diversion uh, because of the internal security situation by the security forces to sort of focus on the internal side, whereas, uh, you know, the borders need to be also uh, seen to it that, you know, there is no infiltration from Afghanistan and other places as, uh, so that you know, these, these militants come and uh, attack in Balochistan or in the KP and other areas of Pakistan. So I think this is a great dilemma, and you, you are very right, I mean, in this, it's very unfortunate these very incidents, and they are a great setback uh, to the normalization of politics in Pakistan because many people would be hesitant, especially in these areas, to go and vote because they know that they can be targeted.